All right. Hello, KeyFest. My name is John Tinklenberg with CASA, and we are pleased to welcome Nick Foley, our customer support specialist. Um, he leads the team over here, and he's going to walk us through a demo of our basic multi-sig. And we hope you've enjoyed our sessions today and have found the content useful, and, and um, we hope you enjoy this demo as well. Take it away, Nick. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's my understanding this is the last presentation of KeyFest. So this morning I was outside building a snow fort with my kids and then went inside and played dress up dolls with my daughter. And uh, now it's four o'clock and I get to present uh, CASA's gold multi-sig membership. Um, so I'm gonna get into it. In here, we are going to be setting up CASA app as if we've downloaded it for the first time and we're setting up multi-sig. And we'll also do a little demonstration on things like health checks and sending out a transaction and do a little tour of the app as well. So again, my name is Nick. I uh, do customer support here at Casa and we'll go ahead and jump into it. So when we open the app here, you'll notice that we have two wallets here at the top. We have a basic multi-sig and then I have a single key wallet. So the single key wallet is more of an on-the-go spending wallet. You can spend funds, um, when you're away from your home, you don't need to worry about signing with multiple keys. Uh, recommended to just keep a couple hundred dollars worth of uh, worth of Bitcoin on the single key at, at a time. It's one of those situations where going out to dinner with some friends, somebody covers your meal and you want to send them a little Bitcoin. Uh, you can do that through single key. So the bulk of funds should be stored in basic multi-sig. And at Casa, we believe that multi-sig is extremely important because it takes away it takes away a lot of centralized points of failure and centralized risk in each individual key that you have so for instance um if you are experienced at all with bitcoin or cryptocurrency you've used wallets like a ledger or a treasure device um, and these are their own wallets so when you set up a wallet with a ledger for example you're using the ledger as a single signature wallet so when you go to sign you unlock your ledger device, you select the Bitcoin address you want to send to, and you send it out. With Casa Multisig, this ledger now is, is not its own wallet, but rather it's acting as one of multiple signing keys in a larger setup. So in this instance, it's a two of three multisig setup. So we need at least three, uh, at least two key, key signatures to send out funds, and we have three total keys. So any two of those keys. So you could lose one key or one key could be totally compromised and your Bitcoin could still be, will still be safe. So that's the idea behind this. Um, so we're going to walk through the process of setting up Casa app here. So you notice I have three keys here and none of them here are connected. So we're going to connect and go through each key. Um, the first one will start off and just tap the mobile key. So I'll explain a little bit about the mobile key and you should all be able to see my screen. By the way, there will be a Q&A session at the end of this. So there should be a Q&A box um, that you could submit questions. So if you have any questions as we go along or something that I didn't, did not cover, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna spend a few minutes at the end and definitely try to get to everybody's questions. So um, definitely think of some questions as we go along here. <clears throat> So the mobile key is a very industry unique thing. There's not really anybody else um, doing this. And how we how we secure your mobile key here is it's stored on your phone. So essentially one of the three keys in your multi-sig setup is stored on your phone. And what Casa app does is it encrypts that and it backs it up with your phone's integrated cloud service. So in this case, I'm using an iPhone. So my mobile key is going to be encrypted and backed up with Apple. Um, if I was using an Android phone, it would be encrypted and backed up with Google because that's the default uh, cloud storage for your phone. So the idea there is if I were to lose my phone, something happened to my phone, it breaks, I can get a new phone, download Casa app on that new phone. And as long as I'm signed into that same Apple account in the system settings of that new phone, then Casa app will be able to pull that back up. Casa app will decrypt it with your unique login. And then that key will be available on your new device. So it's it's uh, it's very difficult to lose this key. It's not impossible, um, but we make it very difficult to lose the key. So this has a lot of redundancy in it. Um, Apple and Google have, uh, 
enterprise grade servers that they keep this on. And the fact that it's encrypted means that if Apple or Google were to somehow be able to read that key, it would be essentially useless because it would be encrypted. The other advantage there is let's say that they were able to read that mobile key seed phrase in plain text. It's still just one of multiple keys in your multi-sig setup. Remember here, you need at least two key signatures. So this mobile key could potentially be totally compromised and your Bitcoin would still be safe. All right, so enough chatting. I'm going to set, set it up. So I'm going to just tap set up mobile key. And so what it's doing here is it's creating the key on my device. And it's also created a backup in the cloud. So it's done those two things here. And that's a very simple mobile key uh, setup. So we have one of our three keys connected here. So we just have two more keys left. So the next key I'm going to do is the hardware device key. So I'll tap on hardware device. And I'll go over here to key types and I'll open up our knowledge base. By, our, by the way, we have um, a lot of resources at support.keys.casa for a lot of things. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, if you're if you're familiar with these with these hardware wallet devices, um, they can be used as their own wallet, which is the most popular way to use them. With Casa, they become one of multiple signing keys. So you're using this device as one of your signing keys to send out. So ultimately, once I set up my keys and I go to send out, I'll need to sign from the mobile key and then sign from my hardware device. We support uh, a handful of different hardware devices, and we're working on supporting additional hardware, do uh, hardware wallet devices. Currently, you can do a Ledger Nano S or a Ledger Nano X. We support both of those. Um, you can also use a cold card with your setup. You can also use a keystone with your setup. Today, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the super simple Trezor 1. They also have a Trezor Model T, which is their fancier version, which we do also support. So to set this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap uh, Set Up Hardware Key. And the app is going to ask me which one I'm using. So I'm going to select Trezor and then select Continue. And so for this part, um, I'm not going to be plugging my Trezor directly into my phone. What I'm going to be doing is plugging it into my computer. So Casa app is going to um, trigger an email, be sent to my email address. So I'm going to open up that email and then sign with that. So before starting here, um, we need to make sure that you do have a, um, a, a laptop or a desktop computer, uh, Mac, Windows, or Linux will all work. All right, so I'm going to tap Let's Go and send email. All right, and I will drag this over here into the window so you can see what this email looks like. Email just says, connect your device. So I'm just going to copy this uh, link address here. I'm going to pop that window back over in here so I don't dox my, my inbox. I'm going to open up a new tab here. And essentially what we're doing is we're going to be sharing the Trezor's public key here. And what you're doing is you're interacting with Casa's API here. So it says we're going to talk to your device. Uh, in this case, I'm using a Trezor. So I'm going to select Trezor. It says we're going to talk to your Trezor. I'm going to hit continue. At this point, I do need to physically plug my Trezor into my computer, which I have neglected to do thus far. One moment. OK, so I'm going to allow Casa's API to read the public key. I'm going to click Allow once for the section, uh, session, then click Export. And then I'm going to enter the PIN code for my Trezor device. All right, and it said that worked. <clears throat> and then if I go back here to the app main screen, you can see that I have the hardware device connected now. So I'm going to actually disconnect that. I don't need it right now. And I also need to plug in and get some juice for my computer. The battery is, make sure the battery doesn't run down because it's it tends to tends to go, go down fast on a screen share. All right, so now I have two of my keys connected here. And I'm going to connect the third key, which is the CASA recovery key. So I'll talk briefly here about the CASA recovery key. 
Casa Recovery Key um, is the only key that we hold for you. So the other keys you are totally responsible for, you are holding your own keys. We hold one of the keys. And the reason we do that is if you have make a mistake, lose your hardware wallet device, for some reason you can't get that mobile key backup, um, you can rely on us to apply one of the signatures to your transaction. We can't apply two signatures to, to the transaction. You need at least two signatures to spend here from this multi-sig key set. So CASA can help you with one of the signatures. This means that we've purposely set it up so that we at CASA can never spend your funds on your behalf. That makes it so that we are not a custodian of funds. We don't hold your funds in our custody or under our control. Um, a big advantage of that is that we don't have to do any kind of um, AML or KYC on customers, which is when if you uh, have an account with a major exchange, um, it just means that uh, you don't have to submit a lot of personal information like your ID card or your passport or your social security number or anything like that. We don't even need to know your real name. So it's possible to sign up with CASA completely pseudonymously. Um, it can be as anonymous or as not anonymous as you'd like it to be. And that's one advantage of that. Um, so at the gold level, in order to authenticate use of the recovery key, should I ever need to use it, and in normal operation of CASA app, I won't ever need to use the CASA recovery key, it's really there in an emergency scenario in which I've lost access totally to one of my other keys. So the way that we authenticate it is that we, is we answer three security questions that I'm going to set up here now. So it says you're going to choose three security questions. If you ever need a signature for the CASA recovery key, you'll have to re-enter these answers exactly as you set them today. So make sure that whatever answers that you write down here, you keep them in a secure place. You can write them down, put them in a home safe. That's, um, that's one option. Um, some people choose to keep their recovery questions saved in a password manager. That's also an option for sure. So. I'm going to just tap continue here. Also keep in mind that whatever questions here you set, it should not be publicly available information, right? So, you know, this for this question, what year did you first acquire cryptocurrency? You know, let's say I made a tweet that said I first bought uh, I first bought Bitcoin in 2017. I probably don't want to make that my answer, right? <clears throat> So this is a burner account. Um, so I'm fine showing you all what my answers here are. Um, these are not real answers. Um, obviously, you should not share these with anybody else. Um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm, uh, I don't mind sharing these. Okay, so it says the questions and saved and uh, questions have been saved. So like I said, the only need the only time you'll ever need to use those answers or call upon those answers is if you ever need a recovery signature with CASA. <clears throat> okay, so that is the entire setup of the app. You'll notice I have three keys connected here. So I have a um, mobile key, I have a hardware device key, and I have a CASA recovery key. I would mention that at the gold level of membership, we do have the option if you are concerned about that mobile key backup for any reason, Let's say that you don't trust Apple or Google with that backup, totally understandable. We do have the option to opt out of that mobile key and use a second hardware device instead. So your setup can optionally have, for instance, uh, a Trezor device, a Ledger device, um, as well as that CASA recovery key. So I'm going to do a quick tour of the app here. Over here, I have um, my account settings. So if um, if you wanted to play around and test the app with Testnet Bitcoin, um, you could potentially do that if you wanted to. Um, Testnet is just um, another another kind of side Bitcoin network that doesn't have any real monetary value. Um, you also have the ability to send Sovereign Recovery info. So just as a, a quick prepper, um, Sovereign Recovery is, in a nutshell is the ability to spend funds outside of CASA app, right? So we've just generated keys in a multi-sig key set 
none of those keys that we've generated are proprietary to Casa app. They will work with uh, open source third party apps like Electrum or Spectre are two of the uh, two of the open source applications that we have sovereign recovery instructions for. So that basically means if Casa app is completely unresponsive for any reason, you can um, take your keys and you can go download this open source software, Electrum as an example, and uh, you can plug in your keys there and you can actually spend your Bitcoin there. So we are about um, decentralizing risk and reducing uh, central points of failure, or eliminating as many central points of failure as possible. And we consider us to be a possible central point of failure. So we don't want ourselves to be a central point of failure. We don't want you to rely on our infrastructure. That being said, um, Casa app makes that um, uh, multi that makes those multi-sig transactions very easy. It makes setting up multi-sig easy and it makes managing and sending multi-sig easy. All right, we also have a purchase Bitcoin function here within the app. So for most places within uh, within the US, you can link most states in the US, you can link a bank account. Um, for other people in, in the US or outside of the US, um, if you are an iPhone user, you can purchase using your debit card that's connected to Apple Pay. <clears throat> and so you just uh, click buy and you can select your destination. Um, in this case, the destination is um, basic multi-sig. And so this um, Bitcoin that I would purchase here would be delivered directly to a wallet that I control. So that's a big, uh, a big plus of purchasing through Casa is remember we're not a custodian of funds so once this purchase clears um, then the funds are delivered straight to your wallet you control it you hold the keys um, and you are responsible for that wallet so here this is like i mentioned this is a burner account so i currently have a, a zero bitcoin balance so i do have another account here that um, i will going to log into just so i can uh, show off uh, the sending function and how that works. Let me sign into this other account. <clears throat> so this is a different account, but it's also a gold two of three multi-sig account. And so it's set up here in a very similar way. Um, and I'm going to demo quickly um, our health check function and then sending out Bitcoin. And then as soon as we do that, um, I will get to try to get to everybody's questions. So the health check function in the app is kind of what I call the sleep well at night function. Um, when you perform a health check, what it's doing is it's checking two things. Uh, Casa app is checking to make sure that you have your key on your device and that it's ready and available for signing when you need it. And it's also checking that cloud backup. So Casa app also just uh, ver uh, pinged your uh, phone's cloud source storage. So it pinged Apple, made a request for that file, and found that and saw that that file was there. So you can do the same thing for the Casa recovery key. It's not called a health check, but you can verify the recovery questions and walk through those and make sure that you wrote them down correctly. If a few months later you're thinking, oh, what was the answer to that question? I'm not sure. You can also do a health check on the hardware wallet device, and that involves plugging it into your computer and sending it out that way. So I'm going to send out funds from Casa app here. So I have a Bitcoin wallet on my other phone here. I'm going to tap receive Bitcoin and get a Bitcoin receiving address there. So when I swipe up here, you'll notice I have my transaction history here. I have a send and receive button. This is where my balance lives. So when I want to initiate a transaction, it's very similar to other Bitcoin wallets. I would just tap send. I would input the amount that I want to send. You know, I'll send $50 here. I'll choose the recipient. I'm going to choose to scan a QR code. <clears throat> and that QR code that I scanned was just from a, a random Bitcoin wallet that I had on my other phone. Um, I can also adjust the transaction speed. So whenever you send out funds, you're paying a fee to the Bitcoin network. None of this goes to CASA. Um, it's just a fee for the Bitcoin network that, that's sent out. Um, in this case, I'm not in a hurry, so I'm actually going to select a slow transaction speed, which is a little bit cheaper. It might take a little bit longer to confirm. Click review send, swipe up. 
and it'll begin signing the transaction here. <clears throat> so the first signature it's going to make is from uh, the mobile key. So it says first signature added, that's done automatically. So I'm gonna tap continue signing and tap to add a new signature. So remember, this is a multi-sig wallet. I need multiple key signatures to spend. So that's this, this transaction that I've just initiated, it's not complete yet. It has not been sent out or broadcast to the network. It will not be able to be sent out and broadcast to the network until I apply that other signature, that second signature there. And remember that in that case, it is uh, the signature that we have from our Trezor. <clears throat> So I'm going to tap to add new signature. I'm going to tap send email. And again, I'm going to physically plug my Trezor in for this part. And it is recommended that you keep this, um, this device in a, uh, a separate location from your home. Um, you don't want to store this device at your home just because you don't want to have a key quorum um, at your home. God forbid somebody breaks into your home. They would not be able to force you to spend your Bitcoin um, because you don't physically have the keys. So the idea here behind multi-sig is that you're purposely making it more difficult to spend your funds. And you do this because if it's difficult to, for you to spend funds, it's going to be difficult for a potential attacker to spend funds. So I got that link. And again, here I'm using a Trezor. So in this case, rather than just sharing the public key, what I'm doing is I'm adding a signature to the transaction. So I'm using this device to sign the transaction. I'm going to allow, enter my PIN code. And uh, I do have to confirm the send on my Trezor device here. It says confirm sending to this address. So I'm gonna confirm it. Okay, and it says that worked. And you notice here, I'm gonna plug my power back in one moment. So I no longer need my hardware wallet device here. So I can safely disconnect it. And it says this transaction is ready to be completed. So I have two key signatures here, my mobile key and my hardware key, and I'm gonna hit complete transaction. So it says success, your transaction has been broadcast to the network. So I've uh, applied the signature from my mobile key. I've applied the signature from my hardware device key. And then that transaction um, is sent out. And that uh, concludes the setup and the quick tour of the app. Um, if you wanted to receive, I guess, is the only part that I didn't cover. There is a receive button. So this is uh, a uh, Bitcoin address that you can use to receive. Um, this will change, and that's normal. So it, once, you, once I receive Bitcoin to this address, um, the app will generate a new Bitcoin address. Uh, no reason to be concerned. That's very common with Bitcoin wallets. Um, it is fine to uh, whitelist this address with an exchange. Um, some exchanges allow you to put additional security around a single withdrawal address. So it's fine to reuse that address that Casa app is giving you. All right. OK, so that's it. And I will go through Q&A. Um, I hope that was helpful. Again, we have support.keys.casa, which is our uh, help center. Um, and let's see what else we have. <clears throat> okay, so I'm looking for questions here. <clears throat> Um, it says, isn't there some risk that CASA can get a hold of two of the three keys, i.e. malicious code that makes its way somehow into iOS app that would enable the mobile key to be copied? So yeah, we were chatting a little bit about that mobile key and mentioned the mobile key lives on your phone and it's also backed up to the cloud. Those are the only two places that it ever goes. Modern smartphones have what's called a secure enclave. It's a place in your device um, that's uh, where sensitive sensitive data, such as private key data and passwords, are kept separate from other, other applications. So that's where that's stored. 
Um, that being said, those are the only places where it's stored. That mobile key seed phrase never touches CASA servers and is never sent to CASA servers. Um, there are a lot of internal protocols that we have against malicious app updates that would make an update that would, for instance, share your, your uh, mobile key with CASA. Um, if that is a huge concern to you, which understandably for some people it is, um, then you can opt out of that mobile key and then use a second hardware device key instead. Um, and I would point out that at the three of five membership levels um, with uh, platinum and diamond membership, um, you get access to your single key, you get access to your two of three basic multi-sig wallet, but you also get access to what we call our key shield wallet, which is a three of five multi-sig wallet. Now, even in a three of five multi-sig wallet where you have three hardware devices, plus the CASA recovery key, plus the mobile key. Let's say that CASA was totally taken over um, by some large entity that forced us to make this update. And then um, we now had control of the CASA recovery key as well as the mobile key. We still would not be able to uh, send funds out because it is a three of five multi-sig key set. So you would need at least three key signatures. Um, but like I mentioned, um, we, don't, we don't want that to ever happen. Um, but if that is a concern, or if you have a concern with a uh, CASA app, or you have a concern with uh, Apple or Google, um, definitely consider opting out and using two hardware devices instead. All right, other questions here. <clears throat> Someone asks, does the backup mobile key act as a second key? I.e., if the app or device is compromised, can the two mobile keys be used to sign a two of three transaction? No, it's not a second key. It's just a backup key of the mobile key on your device. So by having that backup, it's not an it, it can't be ever be used as an additional key signature. Rather, that backup is there in case you lose the actual mobile key that's on your phone. That would happen if you lost your phone, or that would happen if your phone gets dropped in a, in a boating accident, dropped in the water in a boating accident, right? Um, that kind of thing is what that protects against. Um, it can't be used as a second signature. Um, in this two of three multi-sig wallet, the mobile key is just one of the keys in your multi-sig key, uh, in your multi-sig key set. Someone asks, is it possible to have a duplicate hardware device with the same key so that if one hardware device breaks, user can still have a backup? That's absolutely possible. Um, a good time to talk about our optional seedless setup. So when you first set up these devices, and if you go to our website, let me see if I can try to find where that is in getting started. So for instance, with this Trezor 1, we have instructions on setting up the Trezor 1. Uh, just right out of the box. So when you open up that Trezor one, it'll show you um, step by step exactly how to how to set it up with Trezor. And what you're doing is you're creating that key. So prior to this demonstration, I've already done that on my Trezor and I've created that key. That's the part for people who have done this before. That's the part where it has you write down a 24 word uh, seed phrase backup, right? Um, that seed phrase backup can be used to uh, restore the CASA signing key on a new device. Um, with a multi-sig setup, we consider it optional to write down that seed phrase. Um, the benefit of not writing down the seed phrase is that seed phrases themselves can be an additional point of compromise. It can, it can allow that specific key to be compromised without your knowledge. So let's say that somebody was able to access your, those 24 words, that backup, um, even if they just saw it once or they took a photo of it, even years later down the line, it could uh, they could they could recreate that key on a new device. Um, but to go back to the question on is it possible to have a duplicate? Absolutely. Should you choose to write down that seed phrase, and something happens to your hardware wallet device, you know, back to the boating accident, something happened, you drop that in the uh, in the Mediterranean or something like that, um, you can get a new device and use that 24 word backup to restore that uh, CASA signing key on a new device. Likewise, if you wanted to purchase two different Trezors, and this generally is not recommended to duplicate private keys, but you could potentially uh, purchase two Trezors and uh, restore the second Trezor with that seed phrase. So essentially, the two Trezor devices 
would have the same exact CASA signing key. So if something happened to one of them, you could just pick up the other one and kind of carry on as if nothing happened. So yes, that's definitely possible. Um, the, like I mentioned, it's generally not recommended to duplicate private key data just because it uh, opens up the possible surface area of attack. <clears throat> Someone asked, does um, CASA plan to support hardware keystone wallet device with multi-cryptocurrency firmware? Now it supports only Bitcoin firmware version. Um, so some of these devices, like a uh, cold card, for example, and uh, Keystone, they have the option to just support uh, Bitcoin. And inherently, that makes it slightly more secure just because there's less software on the device and less possible place for malicious code to be injected. Um, so it's currently recommended, um, and I think it's only possible, like the like this customer is mentioning, to use Bitcoin only firmware on the Keystone. So we don't have have um, plans to change that. I think the idea is that you'd like to be using the Keystone to secure other assets, but also use it for Casa. Um, in general, we do recommend that whatever hardware device you're using for Casa, you do use exclusively with Casa. So nothing would technically prevent me so let's say if i had some altcoins or something like this on my trezor wallet nothing technically prevents me from adding this device to casa and now it's its own wallet but it's also a casa signing device and also those funds that you have on the trezor are not at risk at all right if you had other other coins like monero or litecoin or something on here um, none of those coins are at risk by adding the device to CASA, but again, it is recommended that you exclusively use that device with CASA. That also goes back to the seedless setup, right? If you are, um, if you choose to do a seedless setup and you have funds on that, uh, that device's single signature wallet, other altcoins besides Bitcoin, you definitely do need to retain the seed phrase because that is the only backup for it. Um, if you don't have a seed phrase and something happens to your device with CASA, you can create a recovery transaction using your remaining keys. And normally that would be the mobile key and then the CASA recovery key. Okay, let's see, looking through other questions. Thank you all for your good questions. Uh, somebody asks, does CASA app allow for management of multiple accounts uh, for example, account A is a personal account, account B is a multi-sig for a family member uh, or a family, family account or something like that. Um, yeah, we do have the ability within CASA app at the gold level to add a sub-account. So adding a sub-account creates an entirely new CASA wallet. And sorry, I, I just realized that these, uh, these GIFs on this page are probably kind of annoying to everybody. <laughs> um, you can create a sub account within Casa app. And what that does is it, it uses your, your same keys. So you don't need to worry about getting new hardware device or creating an, another mobile key or anything like that. You can create a sub account within there. And um, essentially what that does is that gives you access to two different wallets in Casa app, totally different derivation paths. So fundamentally different wallets and kept separate, totally separate from each other. Um, for the purposes of like, you know, bird's eye view on the blockchain, um, seeing things happen, they would be in totally separate uh, address groups or uh, in different key sets. Um, we do have uh, the ability to add more than one sub account if you are at the platinum and diamond level. Um, also, we have a feature at the diamond level of membership called team signing, which is really neat because it allows you to distribute hardware device keys to different people on your team or in your family, and they can act as signers on transactions in a three of five uh, multi-sig wallet, and they will have their own login to CASA app with their own email address and everything like that. Uh, someone asks, what information is sent in that uh, sovereign recovery email? So the information that's sent in Sovereign Recovery is um, instructions on how to recover your funds um, outside of CASA. And it also gives all of the necessary information that you need to do that that's specific to your wallet. So this is what that email looks like. Um, it says CASA Sovereign Recovery Information. And it shows um, the uh, all the information that you need to recreate this in an app like Electrum or Spectre. So it'll show your public keys, your extended public keys, and then it will also show the derivation path here. So you using this information, 
um, you can recreate everything about your wallet except for the ability to spend your funds. All right. So keep in mind, like me showing you this information here in a screen share does not mean that the Bitcoin that I have in my wallet here are at risk. Um, this is just public key information. It doesn't contain any private key data information. So in order to actually send from an app like Electrum or Spectre, you would still need that mobile key seed phrase, which you can export from the Casa app in, in emergencies like that. And um, you need physical access to that hardware wallet device, right? Okay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, but I'll just scroll down and just just instructions on how to do that. We also have instructions on our website and I think walletsrecovery.org um, is the another website where that information is hosted. All right, so any other questions? Okay, I think that was the last question. Uh, thank you all so much for attending this demo of gold. We have a trial up. If you go to keys.casa, um, you can enter a 30-day free trial for Casa Gold, and that allows you to try it out risk-free. Um, should you choose to continue on with your membership, it is a very bargain price of $120 annually. And why would you pay for a Bitcoin wallet? Well, a lot of Bitcoin wallets are free. Why pay for one? Um, it's because it allows us to keep up uh, incredible app and infrastructure with a really incredible support team, uh, not to toot my own horn, uh, really incredible support team. And also it allows us to run this service without sharing your data or otherwise selling your data in, other, in any way. We don't show you any ads in Casa app. We're not profiting off of, uh, off of your personal data. Like I said, you can sign up for Casa totally anonymously. You can use a VPN. All of that stuff is good. Um, so at the gold level, you know, that's that can be considered a bargain price. Um, gold is definitely recommended. If you hold over a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, um, you should definitely you should definitely consider that um, just because of the added security it brings to your setup. Should your US dollar value um, get you know, in the 50 to $100,000 range, we do recommend uh, thinking about upgrading to platinum or diamond. Um, and you know, we're always happy to have uh, somebody on our team chat with people about that. Okay, so thank you again. And if you've made it this far into KeyFest, I am the last presentation of KeyFest, so I am signing off for everybody. Um, thank you everybody for attending this as well as all of KeyFest, if you've done that. Um, we love you very much, and I think we can we can stop. Thank you guys. Bye.